Syracuse basketball has an elite class of players coming in. You are Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and welcome into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer, and thank you for making us your first listen of every single day here on the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and we're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. And on today's show, Syracuse basketball has the number 13 overall commit class in the country, and we're going to break it all down. The transfers coming in, the freshmen coming in, and comparing this year's class to the year's prior because the result the results may shock you. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I have a competitive side and it is a big fan of Monopoly Go. The mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go now free on the App Store or Google Play. So on three recently updated their top overall commit classes in the country and Syracuse basketball is number 13 overall, fourth in the ACC, only behind Duke, which has the number one class, North Carolina, which is number seven, and Miami, which is number 12. And I want to just clarify real quickly here. By commit, I mean transfers and freshmen included, okay? Transfers, so the guys that they brought in in the transfer portal, and the freshmen, Donnie Freeman and Elijah Moore, you package them all into one and they spit out an algorithm and it says that Syracuse basketball has the number 13 overall class fourth in the ACC. There are five total commits right now for Syracuse and the Orange have three scholarship spots remaining. Sound good? Let's break it all down now. Who are the transfers coming in so far for Syracuse? Eddie Lampkin was the first to commit. He's got one year of eligibility. He's six foot 11, 300 pounds. And last year at Colorado, he averaged 10 points and seven rebounds. He also averaged two assists per game. And he's known for being an excellent passer, which I broke down on the podcast when Eddie Lampkin committed to Syracuse. He played 28 minutes per night last season, and he is a four-star transfer across the board, okay? Eddie Lampkin is someone who I have said is not expected to be an all-ACC caliber center, even though I would you know, be happy if he could do that. I think it would be fantastic if he could be all-ACC next season, but it's not necessarily realistic what the expectation for Eddie Lampkin should be is he could provide 25 to 30 minutes a night as the starting caliber center, give you eight to 10 points, give you five to 10 rebounds, and just be a serviceable starter, middle of the pack in the conference. That's what you're looking for with Eddie Lampkin. He's got the size. He's going to help rebounding. Not so much a defender, but that's okay because his backup in Naheem McLeod is a very, very good shot blocker given that he's seven foot four. So Eddie Lampkin was the first transfer to commit to Syracuse. And then Jai Air Davis came over from Delaware. He's got one year of eligibility. He is six foot seven. And last year he averaged 17 points and eight rebounds per game on 47% shooting. Back to back all conference player at Delaware. Jair Davis right now projects to probably will not start, but he is going to be the sixth, seventh man on this team. We're going to discuss that Donnie Freeman, the freshman coming in, five-star recruit, probably going to be the day one starter for this team. So with Jair Davis, this is someone who was kind of the Malik Brown replacement, kind of, because obviously Malik Brown goes to Duke. You bring in Jair Davis, they play a similar position, even though Davis is more of a three rather than a four. Davis will see time at the three. 
and the four, in my opinion, probably would play about 20 to 25 minutes per night. And if Donnie Freeman doesn't pan out, expect Jair Davis to play a little bit more. He's not so much a three-point shooter. He is under 30% last season, but he is someone who can create his own shot. Someone that, you know, obviously Syracuse can use players that can create their own shot off the dribble. He's big, he's physical, obviously eight rebounds per night speaks for itself. Solid player in Jair Davis, four-star transfer. And then just last week, we had Jay Quan Carlos, the six-foot point guard from Hofstra with one year of eligibility, transferring over to Syracuse, where he led the CAA conference in assists this past year with over six per game. He also averaged over 10 points per game and was a two-time all-conference defender. Two-time all-conference defender, a four-star transfer. And when I talked about him on the podcast, I explained that he brings four qualities to this team that they really needed, which was one, experience. The Orange last year did not have a really experienced team. And we're going to talk about, you know, why when we're comparing it to prior years, why last year was so low. Spoiler alert, they were 148 last year in total commit class. This year, they're 13. Jaquan Carlos brings experience. He's also a true floor general, something that the Orange haven't had in quite some time. I said that Tyler Ennis maybe was the last one. Carlos isn't as good as Tyler Ennis, but... He's a true floor general, brings a little bit of defense, obviously, being an all-conference defender, a little bit tougher competition in the ACC, and he is only six feet tall, but he's a little bit of a pit bull, someone that can get around easily, and a little bit of shooting, just a little bit. He was 34% from three this past season, which it's not the greatest percentage in the world, but it's also not completely terrible. I think that is more than respectable for Jaquan Carlos. And more importantly, in my opinion, 89% from the free throw line. You shoot 89% from the free throw line, that's basically automatic. Can't take free throws for granted, and Jaquan Carlos can do exactly that. So the three transfers so far that make up Syracuse's number 13 overall commit class or Eddie Lampkin, the center from Colorado, Jair Davis, the forward from Delaware, and Jaquan Carlos, the guard from Hofstra, all having just one year of eligibility, but we live in an age with the transfer portal, so not worry that they only got one year. It, it's just how it is these days with the portal, and plus the guys that they're going after in 2025 that I broke down with 24-7 high school hoops a few weeks ago. This should just be one year, solid play, and we'll be able to replenish next season. Now, speaking of which, these are guys coming up that you know maybe are here for more than just one year. We'll see. Coming up, the freshmen that make up Syracuse's number 13 overall class in the country. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks on an app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. And Syracuse football fans, I know there's a lot of optimism out there, myself included, you can go on FanDuel right now and bet on the Orange to win the ACC at plus 4,500. And this is a bet that I recommend for those that have Syracuse winning double-digit games next season. If you have the Orange winning 10 or more games, then why not take a shot at the Orange winning the ACC next season? What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. 
Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Had to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the streaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, everyone, into Locked On Syracuse. I'm Jackson Holzer, and on today's show, we're breaking down why and how and who make up Syracuse's number 13 overall commit class in the country. On the first segment, we went over the three transfers, Eddie Lamkin, Jair Davis, Jaquan Carlos. Each of them all have their own podcast, so after this one, I highly suggest checking out all three of those ones where I go more in depth on each one of them and maybe more of their roles. Now it's time to talk about the two freshmen that make up Syracuse's commit class so far this year. And let's start with Donnie Freeman, shall we? Donnie Freeman, I talked about on last week's podcast that he is just by ranking, just by ranking, and you can do what you want with rankings. Okay. Okay. You can do what you want with them. But what I will say, by the rankings, by the ESPN 100, Donnie Freeman is the best Syracuse basketball recruit out of high school since Carmelo Anthony. Donnie Freeman is the best Syracuse basketball recruit since Carmelo Anthony in 2002. Let that sink in for a second. Best since Carmelo Anthony. High expectations for sure for Donnie Freeman next season. He is six foot nine, obviously a five star recruit across the board. I believe 24 7 Sports actually doesn't. They have him outside the top 20, but they're the lone wolf on Donnie Freeman. Everyone else or everywhere else, he is a five star. This is someone who I have. I brought on Jamie Shaw, on three senior recruiting analyst to talk about Donnie Freeman, was one of the biggest risers in the class. He really impressed over the week during the McDonald's All-American week, and then the game, he hit two three-pointers. Not He didn't do so well in the Jordan Classic, but still, I wouldn't worry too much because these updated rankings for Donnie Freeman came after that game. And I said on the Donnie Freeman podcast when I said he is the best recruit since Carmelo Anthony, it is a really encouraging sign to see someone rise at this time of year. A lot of times with recruits, you'll see them kind of treading water, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. But other times, a guy will be ranked a five-star recruit, top 10 in the country, and then three months later, they're outside the top 30. It happens. It has happened with players. Donnie Freeman is the opposite. He was a five-star recruit, but he has really become a borderline five-star to a elite recruit in the country. Elite, elite, like the room within the room. The room within the room. That's where Donnie Freeman is right now in this high school recruiting class. Donnie also provides rebounding for this team. He averaged more per game than anyone else in his high school league, which was the EYBL Scholastic League. Everyone except Derek Queen, who is a five-star recruit from Maryland. Now, you know he, he doesn't have necessarily the, high, the biggest frame in the world, but that's okay for someone that's going to be a freshman next season. He's got a full offseason to bulk up just a little bit, but this is someone who can score – at all three levels on the floor, Donnie Freeman next year, the expectation should be sky high, at least over 10 points per game. Probably should be a one and done player. I mentioned nine of the last 10 last year or last week have been one and done players at number six. And he projects to be the starting power forward for next season, probably seeing at least 30 minutes per night. Now the other freshman that makes up this class is Elijah Moore. That is a six foot four, four star guard out of Bronx, New York. He projects to be a sniper at the next level. And what do I mean by sniper? This is someone that can shoot. Elijah Moore can shoot the basketball. 
So, if you can shoot, you can carve out a role. He's right now on the depth chart, probably the fourth or fifth guard. Because you got Jaquan Carlos, you got J.J. Starling, you got Chance Westry. He, they might bring in someone else too. Talked about Kev Evans yesterday. And then it's between him and Kyle Cuff. Now the difference between him and Kyle Cuff is that Elijah Moore has a much more is much more likely to carve out a role because of his shooting ability. Talked about that with Jamie Shaw. This is someone he starts hitting his shot early in camp, starts impressing the coaches with it. Who knows? Maybe Elijah Moore. We'll see the floor more than we think next year for someone that is a low-end four-star recruit. He is not in the ESPN 100. Typically, those guys don't do too much in their freshman years. But Elijah Moore, just think shooting. If Elijah Moore thinks shooting, if he can shoot right away, he's going to play because this is a team that certainly needs more shooting. So the two freshmen that make up Syracuse basketball's number 13 overall commit class in the country are five-star recruit power forward Donnie Freeman, who is the best high school recruit since Carmelo Anthony, and Elijah Moore, who is a six-foot-four, four-star guard from Bronx, New York. Both those guys make up a pretty solid freshman class that is grouped with this transfer portal class. Now coming up, how does this year's class compare to the years prior? All right, game off. We got to pause here to talk more about Monopoly Go. I know what you're saying. Flag on the play. You already talked about that. But there is just so much good stuff in this game. In Monopoly Go, you can team up with friends for time tournaments where you work together to build up each other's boards. The more you win together, the more awesome prizes you unlock. And there's so much to get. Unique stickers you can trade with friends to complete albums for big prizes. Cool new playing pieces to travel the boards with. Hilarious emojis for taunting friends when you smash their buildings or heist their vaults. Plus, Monopoly Go feels new and exciting every day with constantly changing tournaments and challenges. A ton include their own unique mini games like Digging for Treasure or a Robot Panico Machine. And there's always new timed events that help you win big, like massive multipliers for everything you win or rent frenzies. There's always something fun to discover in Monopoly Go. So get off the bench and go download it now, free on Google Play or the App Store. Game on. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Welcome back, everyone, into Locked on Syracuse, and I'm Jackson Holzer. And on today's episode, we're going over the Orange's number 13 overall commit class in the country, which includes transfers and freshmen. The Orange currently have five of them. In the first segment, we went over the three transfers, which are Eddie Lampkin, Jair Davis, and Jaquan Carlos, all having just one year of eligibility left, all four-star transfers. And then... The freshman, Donnie Freeman, five-star recruit, and Elijah Moore, who is a four-star recruit. We talked about them a little bit. And now it's time to compare this year's class to some of the previous ones. So I did some digging on on three, and they have it listed for the best recruiting classes. Not the best recruiting classes, but you can go year by year with these commit classes for Syracuse. And right now, their number 13 ranking is the highest it's been for the Orange since 2016. So eight years as of right now, Syracuse hasn't had a class that's been better in eight years. Pretty impressive stuff. Now last year, as you might be able to tell in the thumbnail of this video, Syracuse was number 148 in commit class. And what kind of was 
shocking about that, or what is shocking about it, is that J.J. Starling is included and was a top 10 transfer overall. He was a top 10 transfer overall, and Syracuse was still that bad in its commit class last year. Number 148 overall. The commits in that class were J.J. Starling, Chance Westry, Naheem McLeod, Kyle Cuff, and William Patterson. And by the way, this is heading into the season, so it's not factoring in how these players turned out. For example, if if you know Chance Westry plays last year and is an All ACC player, it doesn't impact the number one forty eight. That is locked in when the season starts. It's locked in. It doesn't help either that you know, JJ was maybe. It depends on what your expectations for him, but he did perform pretty well last season, especially in the second half. But Chance Westry obviously got hurt before the year started. Naheem McLeod got hurt midway through the year and was, quite frankly, not a starting caliber center. He looked like someone who would be better as a backup, which is not a bad thing because now he's going to be the backup heading into next year. Kyle Cuff, who... This is a decent defender, maybe has a little bit of a shot, but didn't really do a whole lot. And William Patterson, who redshirted, didn't see the floor except for, I believe, one exhibition game. And, well, now he's in the transfer portal. So they were number 148 for a reason. It didn't really pan out the way that we hoped. In 2022, they were number 20. So the number 148 in summary, by the way, guys, is kind of an outlier in the last five years. So in 2022, they were number 20 overall, and that was the year with six freshmen. Judah Mintz, Chris Bell, Malik Brown, Justin Taylor, Quidair Copeland, and Peter Carey. And they also did have one transfer in, Minir Hima. So that year, they were number 20 overall, which was pretty solid, considering you know that's pretty good. Top 20 overall in the country. In 2021, they were number 18 overall. And that class was headlined by Benny Williams. I believe Jimmy Beheim and Cole Swider were also in that class of 2021. 2020 was number 31. Kadari Richmond was the highest ranked commit slash recruit, whatever you want to call it. He was the highest one. And in 2019, they were number 37 overall. And Bryson Goodine was the number one player in that class. Joe Girard was also in that class. He panned out okay, I think. I'm just kidding. Of course he panned out, considering he was a three-star recruit and played in college for as long as he did and just had a very, very good year at Clemson. So, you know, this class, number 13 overall, is the best since 2016. You've got three transfers here that are four stars. You got two freshmen a five-star and a four-star there. Lots of stars. That is a good thing. And folks, there is still time. Now, I'm releasing this video April 30th at night. So players don't have that much time to enter the portal. They have until May 1st. They have till May 1st to enter it. But players do not have to commit before then. Okay? They don't have to commit. They can take really as long as they want. I guess until classes start in the fall. That's how long they can go. So the clock is ticking on players entering the portal and the options available. But I suspect that Syracuse is not done trying to improve its roster because they have the scholarship spots to do it. They have three of them. And they they have a really good class, number four in the ACC. But why not try to make it just a little bit better? Why not? Why not? So overall, I'm pretty optimistic heading into next year, given where or given where Syracuse is ranked in these classes. Again, you can take the rankings for how you will, but on three has them as a top 15 team, number 13 overall. So do what you want with that. Me personally. I'm setting the expectations high. I believe this is a team that should win at 23 games, considering they won 20 last year. 
23 fair feels like a number that they should be able to achieve because they don't have to go to Duke. They don't have to go to North Carolina. They don't have to go to Virginia. They get all those, they get those teams at home. Yeah. Number 13 overall class highest since 2016. Now coming up on the show in the next couple of days, we'll have a Syracuse basketball transfer portal update in terms of who left Syracuse because tomorrow, of course, is the deadline for players to submit their names into the portal. So we'll update you on that. And on Friday, we will have Locked On's football recruiting expert, Brian Smith, on the show to go over Syracuse football recruiting. Talk about the class of 2024. We'll talk about the class of 2025, which is top 10 in the country, and the class of 2026, which is top three in the country right now. That's what I got planned over the next couple of days. Of course, on Friday at 6 o'clock, Paul Friday, the biggest remaining need for Syracuse basketball. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. If you like this video, click that like button. And if you really liked it, subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications so you know right away when I'm releasing the next podcast. Everybody take care.